Hey everybody. We've got um I'm gonna show you some chord progressions here. You know, some common chord progressions you can add to your um your toolbox. Is uh like I said before, the more tools we have, the more work we get as bassists or in any career you're in. But as bass players we need tools, we need chord progressions, we need knowledge to succeed. So so I'm Donald Witt, the bass instructor of the online course I want to play bass.com and there I help aspiring bassists reach their goals from whether it be working as a bassist or just as a hobby bass player. Um, either way, whatever your goals are, we will get there. Um, regardless, we go from the, the, from the very basics of um, setting up your bass from action, fine tuning, to improvising over, you know, just soloing as a bassist and, um, and the whole nine yards. So check us out, like I say, and down below, so go ahead and subscribe. I've got um, more videos, little lessons, and right now I've got a series, mini series going on about the origins of American music. You can check that out as well um, and see that, you know, we go from the very, you know, the basics from where our American music originated from and how we've gotten to where we are today so i'm halfway through that right now so subscribe hit the bell notification and you'll see i got part four or five coming out next couple days you'll be notified of that and um and in between there i'm sending little um little lessons little tidbits of um playing bass and stuff that i've found helpful through my years of experience and um that have helped me to um, work as a bass player and it will help you to work as a bass player. So, so that's that's what we do at IWantToPlayBass.com, and um, you can subscribe there as well. When you check out the website, go to um, subscribe, and you can. I've got a free ebook there on setting your bass up for success. So you can see the whole nine yards of that um, that there, and it's free for subscribers. So you just subscribe and, and download it right there um, as easy as that and you'll have it at your disposal all the time so um, good stuff there and I've got some other ebooks I'm still um, working on right now that will be added as well in the um, near future um, and so that's it so I'm gonna. I'll jump right into the common chord progressions. I'm, I know that's what y'all are looking for, so that's what we're gonna jump right into. So the first, first one, the most basic, yet um, great chord progression is your standard one four five, and that's just your um, one four five is the. We're going to, I'm going to be in G, so I'll keep it in G, so. So G major right there. So the one is the G, because we've got seven notes, eight counting the octave. And each note has a number, and that number is its chord, or it's, it's part of that scale. It's mode or chord. And since we're just going over chords right now, that'll be... I'll tell you the chord name of that. So the one four five is it's a major seven or just a major, whichever depending on the genre you're in. Rock and roll one four five is used a lot, but you're not using that seventh as much in the chord. You can throw it in there, which you will throw it in there, but it'll just add color to that line. But it's um it's not going to be in the chord like the guitars or the the keyboard player is not typically going to throw that seven in there. <clears throat> Just does not fit. That seven is what gives jazz its its dissonance. You know that it's um it just gives it right on the edge, pushing the tune around, and it gives it. You know that's kind of what you got to acquire as a um, listening to jazz. You acquire that, and it's like drinking coffee. You just acquire it, and you learn to love it. And that's that's what jazz is. And it's kind of an acquired um, ear. Here you've got to um, to appreciate it. But right now the one four five, we'll just use it as in a rock rock scenario, and it's just a major major, and, and it's a dominant. That's a major as well, but 
it's a dominant seven if you, if you throw that seven in there. Um, so that's that's your rock, basically your rock um, chord progression. So and it's you know it's kind of a blues rock, a rhythm and blues chord progression. One, four, five, your major, major, major. So it's all major. And believe it or not, you can actually make a play a sad song with that chord progression. Even though they're all major, major, major is usually a happy sound. And it, it is, it always is. But you can throw, you can turn it into a sad song. So don't be fooled by it. Just being major, it's got to be this sunshine on my shoulder song. But, but it is, it typically can be. So, so one, four, five. You remember that, add that to your to your repertoire, and you know, you can always use that in writing your own music and, and, um, and whatnot. Just remember the one, four, five. And now we'll talk about the the one four five but in like a blues blues feel that way it's like i said it can be used in any genre any genre it's just how you use it but the one four five in a blue these majors typically in a blues genre it's going to be all dominant sevens so that's a g7 that's in c7 that's a d7 and that d7 meaning it's just a d a dominant seven is just it's a major third minor third interval and then another minor third interval so in that that um the intervals of that chord so say the g7 is g b d and f where actually the key of g is an f sharp but a g7 blues kind of makes it that dominant seven kind of moves it around to the next one it's not it's not very resting you know it wants to move to the next thing it keeps it moving where like i said the one four five and just majors everything is constant it just it's fine right there you could stay on that g all day long you could stay on that c all day long throw a dominant seven in there anywhere it would just stay right there and like in country music the one four five actually a lot of times they do the one five country they they use it but they it just stays resting it doesn't want to move it moves where you move it where you take it it doesn't feel like it has to go up to the next resting place resolve it doesn't need to resolve to a different chord but the sevens the blues the g sevens the c sevens and the d sevens it does want it want to push you push you around to the next res res resolution, the next resolving note. So that's when you hit. Your blues one four five with a bunch of dominance in there. 
like I say, that's what pushes it around. That's what keeps it moving in blues is that when they throw in the chord is played. I didn't play the particular the seven in the bass line. It, it's usually played in the guitar chord or the keyboard. So. Just kind of like, like maybe your pop, pop the major is the you know the major one four five is used a lot in pop music as well. Um, Cause like I say pop, it's popular music. It's easy. It's pleasing to the ear. You know, there's nothing to make you say, mm, you know. But that's why it's popular music because it's it's good to the ear. It's like classical music. Classical music uses a lot of major triads, major or minor triads, and they're all resolving notes. There's nothing out of line that makes you think, wow, and that's kind of questionable. You know, it, I got to learn to like that. Not in the majors part or anything like that. It's once you start throwing the sevens in there, it starts to like, hmm. You know, but like I said, it's a choir. You learn to love it, you learn to like it, and then you wind up loving it. It's like you ain't gonna listen to anything else because it's it's so interesting and colorful. So that's your one four fives. Um, you now we're talking about a one four five. You know, in a jazz setting, you're gonna throw that with a one's gonna be a major seven. See how that just wants to go. It's got to resolve to. Preferably there, but you can you can bring it down as well. But it wants to definitely go back to the root, and then you got a C major seven as well. Then you've got your D dominant seven. seven um major seven dominant seven and we'll go we'll do like a walking line of it big common one that's um, used a lot is your 251 that is that's we're in, still in the same major scale still in G but the 2 would be what would be the second of that major scale which is here and that particular 2 of a major scale is always minor it's a Phrygian mode and it's always minor it's a two five one, so that five again would be dominant. And it drops us down to the major, back to the resolving note. Thank you. 
one of them is never in net. You can, but it's just not resting. You want to end it on that G. That's where it's all going to rest. Everybody can say, oh, you know, everybody can be happy again because it lands right there and just wants to rest there. That's your two five one. That's that is a jazz works around two five one just all the time. All the everything you look every chord progression in jazz you can look at will work out to be a two five one. That's basically it. And then you've got your um, another kind of a the jazzier blues. Um, you know the the blues, but it's more of a it's got a, more of a jazz feel because those two work together a lot, and that's it's the blues, but it's still a um, but it's using a lot of like a um, six two five one is kind of it's a, used a lot in blues as well. Um, so that's your six is a minor, a minor seven. Six two one four five is a big one. You know your one five country. Just listen to the genre you're in, and that would depend genres. You know the one four five. I'll be using all of them, but country you won't see often a one five in blues, but you'll see that in country a lot. And the blues will be your one four five. Your you see the two five one in blues, and you'll see the six two five one in blues, as well as jazz. So blues, you know, blues is as I talked about in the previous the blues. It's influenced all of this music. So even before they knew it was the blues, so um, that's going to be in there a lot. So it's the blues and. So you can use those one four five, two five one, six two five one, and the blues and jazz. Those two together can use them all the time. And um, just remember adding the seventh. That's where it gets colorful, and that's when you want to be careful with them. Use those tastefully, and um, use those sevens tastefully, and, and that's how. And and you'll get there. That's you know so. Practice with that. If you got any questions, leave a comment down below. Um, please, I love love the interaction, and um, and I'm glad to help. That's what we're here for. And sign up for the um, I Want to Play Bass.com online course to reach those goals. Like I said, we break this down, and from the beginning, from the beginner to the you know the advanced player, we've got um, a lot of a lot of good stuff in there. Chord charts to um, work off standards we work on building that um our repertoire of standards you know because repertoire the standards of each genre we have those so you can you can get work anytime all the time because you're you're so versatile so we create a versatile player out of you so thank you all i want to play bass.com and look forward to seeing you there. Look forward to hearing from you for sure. And um, let's get it. <laughs>